We begin the show with the wild week with big tech. What began with a President Donald Trump Twitter ban has led to purging of social media accounts, some without notice. Well, our next guest lost access to his Facebook account, citing a violation of community standards. But it appears no details were provided. So let's welcome back former U.S. Republican Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us today. Can you start by just explaining to us what happened in your situation here with Facebook? Well, I was caught by surprise. I guess that's about two days ago that I arrived, and and the staff uh, looks at the uh, uh, you, you know the website right away, and they say hey, they they cut us off there, which was a surprise to me because it's something <laughs> it, for me personally. It's a it's an article that I do every every uh, week, and uh, it's an it's a one article defending liberty. And I've been doing it every week since 1976. I've never had any controversy related to it, and all of a sudden. And they said, you don't follow community standards. And I was uh, just dumbfounded because, uh, you know, the terminology is so weird. Who, who establishes, you, you know, <laughs> community standards? At one station, they interviewed me this, and I was kidding him. I said, so, so which way do I do? Do I get the standards from Vox or do I go to CNN or MSNBC <laughs> to find out what community standards are? <laughs> well, it was bizarre, bizarre, absurd. And then a, a few people, including uh, some good organizations, went and started inquiring, and then the next day they say, oh, it looks like we made a mistake, so we're letting you go back on again. But the intimidation is there. We, we felt intimidated even before that happened, so you can imagine how many other people are involved in, in, in being exposed to this. It doesn't sound like it's pro First Amendment at all. The, the frustration over just being banned over something, similar situations uh, I've seen across the board, especially as of late with this purge they're doing. I believe a Facebook spokesperson did state that, let me read you this, quote, while there were never any restrictions on Ron Paul's page, we restricted one admin's ability to post by mistake. We have corrected the error. What did they say the supposedly th that the error was even in the first place? No, they never would tell us, but I felt restricted. I couldn't add anything and I couldn't change anything, but they didn't take anything off. That's the way I understand it. But uh, it, it, it didn't make any sense. And they talked about this one item and I didn't, at one time on that sentence, I wasn't sure whether they were talking about some item on my staff or some item, some individual, you know, with Facebook or just what was going on. But the whole thing was just, uh, you know, uh, anti-American for that matter. You know intimidation and all of a sudden uh, challenging what we were doing and then this whole thing is you know when they when you try to pin them down or you look at it at, in between the lines you know they're talking about people who are uh, advocating violence and anybody who knows me you know with my libertarian beliefs I am very very pro-peace you right. know we're uh, considered too much for peace because you, you know but that that is what is so ridiculous about it to say that oh they sometimes people express terrorism on these sites and they didn't do they didn't accuse me of that but that's that's sort of I'm thrown in the basket like that they when when you do these things they they say domestic terrorism we have to watch it we have to protect the community so it's uh, you know it's such a distortion of when to uh, uh, the uh, article of the 230 was established it was supposed to sort of guide those companies so that they would make sure that everybody had access to them but what it's turned out now the big companies Companies, big tech. This has given them license to regulate us and keep out the people, not right. allow the people to come in and make use of it. So it's really been messed up, and uh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that uh, it's going to be a while. But I'm still optimistic that technology is going to come along, and there's going to be alternatives, and stations still do exist that allow us to speak, like your station. So it has to be used, but we can't be complacent about it. But uh, of course, uh, I'm in the business of just spreading information. I wish people would think that it's a decent bit of information, just promoting peace and, uh, and you know, prosperity. That's what it stands for, Institute for Peace and Prosperity. Why, why should that be a threat to anybody? I think individuals that run those companies are easily threatened. I, I think they're insecure. They have all the money in the world, <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, they, they have all the power and all these things, but they still feel like, don't let anybody speak. And I keep thinking, you know, I, I'm a 
little outfit. Why would they come and nibble away at me and try to intimidate me? And I, so you know they do it to other people, but I think it's an incentive for people to look for alternative. And I, I don't know the technology, but I'm a believer in technology. I believe the people who are, are aware of what's going on now will develop technology that will be available to an individual like myself so that we can have the safety and security of expressing ourselves at the same time, you know, having decent rules and regulations of true advocacy of violence. And, you know, in some ways, to me, in my mind, it's sort of like, why don't you just treat them like a newspaper? You know, news, newspapers can't just right. slander people. Right. At the same time, uh, there's a fair respect for uh, freedom of speech. Well, much like you said, especially when their community guidelines or their standards are, are so rare, we've talked about this before here on the show, uh, where we want to see this competition. It's almost like they're obviously uh, trying to, to keep that competition out and control this uh, all of, of the, the social media. Ten years ago, these startup firms, Facebook and Twitter, they were relatively small networking sites. Now they've obviously become the, these platforms for government and notable figure, figures just as yourself, to, to communicate to the public. Like you said, you want to get your message out. Since tech platforms have become so central for communication, how should government think about these channels? Do you think uh, they should be regulated more than they are now? Well, I don't, I don't think, uh, you know, reform and new regulations will, will do it. Because my beef is, is, is this uh, thing we're dealing with, uh, big tech, has been uh, guarded and guided by big government. I mean, how did the internet get started? And how, who, do, who cooperates with big tech? Government. They use it for security purposes. You know, they're, they're sort of in bed together. They receive money from government. That is the taxpayer because they're providing a service. And so I, I don't think the government now that they, uh, big tech has learned to make a a lot of money uh, and the technology is protecting them. But I think it's going to change. I think the people are going to get so upset. And I think we've seen it this week. Some of the stocks of the big tech companies actually went down and it's not automatic. And it's not automatic that the people will remain complacent forever. And I think there will be choices out there. And if it comes to the point where there is zero choices, our country's in bad shape. And I don't think we're that bad off. But uh, the complacency has allowed us to get this this point where they feel, uh, you know, uh, encouraged to do whatever they want and, and they make a lot of money at it. Right. And I, I think, though, that people need just to wake up. Well, Congressman, do you see any, uh, where do you see the future of, of tech companies like Twitter and Facebook going? Well, hopefully uh, they get smaller and smaller and lose their influence as they have the con uh, competition because as soon as they see it, you know, they want to crack down on it. If they think I'm participating in competition, you know, they'll, they'll go after anybody, you know, for that. But I think long term, but I, I don't want, you know, some people. They need more laws. We need to have laws against, you know, antitrust laws, and their size is just too big. Uh, I, I don't think uh, that's going to do it because they, they control the legislative process. They, they will have, right. uh, and they will have legislation, but they'll be the lobbyists, and they will got to, will be able to write it. They write all this stuff. So if, if there's any type of regulation, they'll be involved. So that's why I look toward the private sector and literally preserving enough liberty. That's my goal, where individuals can be creative enough that they can just really be competitors. And when the people get sick and tired of it, and believe me, that's what I sense. There's a lot of people now are seeing, are waking up and knowing what's happening. And I think what's also going to precipitate this is uh, the need uh, for the Internet to be unobstructed, uh, because I think our economy is going to get so much worse, and uh, there's going to be people for looking uh, to get their information mm -hmm. out right now now, you know, it's canned information, and that's what bothers me the most, because there's uh, no really freedom and choice in, in what we get, in generally speaking, and this internet is sort of monolithic and sort of lay, on, lay it out there for everybody to accept or reject it. Things are, are getting much worse. People are getting angry, and hopefully this will uh, somehow have uh, people get more right. creative and, and create that competition we're talking about. Former U.S. Republican Congressman Ron Paul, we really appreciate you making time to join us today. It's always great talking to you. Thank you. Nice to be with you.